The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Good day, everyone. Welcome once again to our daily doctrinal Bible study. Following our customary procedure, the next few moments are devoted to silent prayer. So, we might be properly and academically prepared to concentrate on the teaching of the Word of God. Therefore, let us pray. Let us pray, Heavenly Father, we are here once again because we love the Word because we are members of a royal family through our faith in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Because from eternity past, our life has had meaning and purpose and with definition. Because we are commanded to take in your word daily, just as we assimilate physical food daily. We now pray that you give us the necessary concentration and focus to the things you're going to teach us today. All this we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Once again, we welcome all our subscribers, followers, and uh, fellow believers, everybody who has an ear to, to hear and listen to the teaching of Bible doctrine. Okay, we are still concentrating on our topic, the theology of the plan of God. Now, yesterday we said that God is offering salvation to everyone who has an ear so he can listen and his decision can never ever change the plan of salvation. It goes on, like I said, it goes on unaffected. In fact, who are we to affect it? Now, let us go to you, my fellow believer. If as a believer you also ignore, you refuse and reject God's plan for you to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as Second Peter 3.18 mandates, Will your rejection to it affect and change the plan of God? No. The plan of God goes right on. So, that means whatever you do, whatever your reaction is, your decision is towards the plan of God, you may denigrate it, you may criticize it, you may say offensive words against it, you may philosophize about it, you may put it down. All those things will never, never, ever change the protocol plan of God. Never, ever. And listen, negative volition will never stop the function of the plan of God. Arrogance thinks the plan of God depends on man. Because you know what? There are people who would think that whenever they decide to do, let us say, foolish things to God, something comes to their mind as, ah, oh, let's see what God is going to do if I do this or do that. How crazy is that? That's flat out craziness. Now, these people who would say that are simply humanizing God. God is not a man. He is God. You cannot play with God. Like I said, people of this sort just do not know 
don't have any clue who and what God is. And get this, God can get along, He functions with His protocol plan perfectly, without any help from man, without your help. In fact, God never needs help from anybody. He is a perfect God. Let that sink in your mind. Now here's a point of doctrine. Man's failure, whether for a person's rejection of God's plan of salvation or for a believer's rejection to grow to spiritual maturity, does not hinder or frustrate the function of the protocol plan of God. Again, the protocol plan of God moves on its course unhindered. And listen, the protocol plan of God was put up, was established, was created and intended by God for us. If we do not follow and obey it, that's not God's problem. It's our problem. God's plan is intended perfectly for our own benefit, for our own good. He created His plan out of His grace policy. Since it's by grace, He provides it to us human beings out of His being a perfect God. Now let us take these things in the light of one of God's perfect essence, sovereignty. Now what do you understand by sovereignty? Sovereignty means having that supreme authority, the Almighty One. We should establish here the fact that God is a person, okay? Now what do I mean, God is a person? Well, that God is just like you and me. With that premise, we can therefore talk to Him, we can tell Him anything we want to tell Him, we can communicate with Him, right? And you know what? Problems will crop up regarding this because there are believers who in, on one hand are in the extreme. There are Christians who do not consider God as a person. They just think that God is like floating in the air. And there are also Christians who are in the opposite extreme. They consider God more than a person that they go to the extent of asking God for something. They sometimes command Him to do this or that. And the worst thing is, some Christians consider God as some kind of a businessman. Ah, this is all I can give you, God. Hmm? Just like exchanging some things, like you engage in business. That is the problem there. Now let's understand that God is neither of those. God cannot be dealt with through those things I mentioned. No. God is definitely not of that type. That's again a move to humanize God, which is another impossibility. So God is a person, and because He is, He has a personality. Agree? Now, in our case as human beings, our personality is a byproduct or has been influenced by our regular descent of our family, of the origin and historical development, our environment, and many factors. But what about God's personality? Well, listen. God is an eternal, infinite person. Now, how can you possess a personality if you are infinite? Remember that God never had a beginning. Infinite means our finite minds can never completely comprehend everything about God. Now let's pause here for a moment. Have you ever asked yourself, why is there God? Or why is it that there is God? Have you ever tried to ask that question yourself? Why? Or did you ask yourself, where did God come from? Well, we already knew 
that God has not come from, a, from nowhere, because He is everywhere. And you ask, if He was already there, when did He start being there? Well, everything started or begun. He was already there long before there was anything. Do you understand that? Now, how can you describe eternity? God is from eternity to eternity. Speaking of eternity, do you have the guts? Do you know how to define eternity? How can you describe infinity? You cannot, we cannot describe eternity. And that is where God is from eternity to eternity. You see, our minds are very limited. We as human beings are limited to calendars, watches, time, dates. We are limited to space, limited to areas. God is not. We just cannot cope up with who and what He is. We will continue our discussion on this tomorrow. So don't forget to be around to continue listening to the next points of doctrine in this discussion of the theology of the plan of God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time that we commune with you and your word. We are so grateful, Heavenly Father, for the wonderful privilege of examining these things together, which are so important, the mechanics of which do really help us understand grace. May God, the Holy Spirit, then challenge us to persist in our uh, doctrinal study, for we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen.